Howdy folks. In this video, we're going to focus on applying the skills that we've learned so far, and this time we're actually gonna apply them inside of Power BI. So no more Excel simulation, we're gonna actually open up Power BI and do some of this stuff in there. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm in derive iterate application.pbix. I'm in this PBIX file, right? And in this PBX file, I've got one table loaded. It's called the mini table. It's the same table we've been working with over and over and over again. This is our physical table in the data model. Now, uh, I'm here on the tab uh, PT, which stands for um, physical table. This is going to be the first uh, derivation that we work with. And uh, we can see right here, we've got a snapshot of what that physical table looks like, the mini physical table. And if you don't believe me, right, you can actually come over here to where it says data, click on this, and you can see, yep, sure enough, that is the physical table in the data model. Okay. So I'm going to click back here to go look at the canvas. What we're going to do is we've got some uh, measures pre-built, but they don't have any formulas in them yet, right? So right now we've got two, two summary tables, right? This one and this one. And uh, this one, we're breaking down our measures by shift, which is to say lunch or dinner. And here we're breaking them down by type, which is to go or dine in. And so what I want to do is I want to go uh, populate these measures, the units measure, the average units, the sales, and the cost, just so we could see how it works uh, inside Power BI. So let's go ahead and twirl open. Go ahead and twirl open measures right here, right? And here uh, we've got some uh, folders. So go ahead and open up this first one, A, PT. stands for physical table. That's the physical table derivation. That's the one that we're gonna use for this particular tab where we get all the visible rows of the table and we get all the columns. It's an all column respectful derivation, right? So let's go ahead and start uh, with units. That's that first one right there. So if we click on units, what we say, what we could see, is that uh, right now we don't see anything in here because the, the measure current just, currently just returns blank. So click here on line two and hit backspace a couple times till we go ahead and delete all that stuff, right? This is going to be a simple builder pattern where we're gonna use a derivation inside of an iterator. The derivation is just going to be the physical table derivation where we just ask for the table by name, the mini table. The iterator is gonna be the sum x iterator where we take that temp table, add this expression column to it and sum up the results. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and type in sum x, right? Go ahead, hit tab to have it auto complete the sum x for you. Go ahead, hold down shift and hit enter to go to the next line, right? And so uh, sum x wants a temp table to work with. So we're gonna give it a temp table using a derivation. So go ahead and type in mini, right? And go ahead, hit tab to have it auto complete for you. Add a comma, right? And now we're gonna do argument two of sum x. So go ahead, do shift enter to put this on another line, right? So what's the definition of the expression column that we wanna to add to the temp table that comes from that derivation? Well, for every single row, I want you to get that row's units, and that's it. And once you've gotten all those as an expression column, go ahead and sum up the results. So go ahead, do shift enter, go to the next line, hit backspace to move the cursor back to the beginning of the line and add a closing parentheses, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and hit enter and our cells should populate, which is gonna be nice. So we get seven and five and we get eight and four. Let's think about how these things work, okay? So here for this first cell, right? When this measure starts evaluating, it's gonna have a filter that has the uh, a filter context with the filter of shift equals lunch in it. Because see right there where it says lunch? That's what that's gonna do. It's gonna add a filter for shift equals lunch. So when we start evaluating, when we start evaluating the code in this cell right here, we're gonna get all the visible rows of mini given that filter right there. So if we have a filter for shift equals lunch, right? Well, what are all the visible rows? That's just gonna be the lunch rows, which corresponds to that temp table right there, where we just get the lunch rows, right? And then once we've got that temp table from line three right here, what are we gonna do with it? We're gonna add an expression column with a definition for every single row, go get the units, right? So uh, what's it gonna be for that one right there? Well, it's gonna be two, right? So it's two, right? How about that cell right there? Well, that's gonna be one. So we get two, one, one, and three. So two plus one plus one plus three. Oh, I'm not fantastic at math. Let's see. So two plus one equals three, plus one equals four, plus three equals seven. And sure enough, we get seven right there. Okay, let's see how this looks for this cell. How's it doing it for this cell? Well, it's the same exact thing. The only difference is for this cell, right? Because it's on this row, we're gonna get a filter in the filter context for shift equals dinner, not shift equals lunch, that's how we got this cell, but shift equals dinner, which is what we're gonna get for this cell right here, okay? Okay, so uh, what's gonna happen inside the formula? Just like before, we're gonna get all the visible rows of mini. And if we have a filter for shift equals dinner, that's gonna produce this temp table 
right here, right? So for this cell and this cell, we get two different temp tables because we've got two different sets of filters, two different filter contexts. For the bottom one, since it evaluates in this row that has a shift of dinner right there, Power BI is gonna add a filter for shift equals dinner, producing this temp table right here when we go derive all the visible rows in mini, right? So when we ask for mini in this cell, we get this temp table. Okay, so uh, what's the definition of our expression column? Well, uh, just like before, for every single row, get the units, and that's it, okay? So uh, for this cell, we get two, so two right there, that gets two. How about for this cell? Well, we would get one, right? So we get two and one, and for this cell, we get two. And what do we do with the results? Well, since we're using the sum x function, we're gonna sum those up. So uh, two plus one plus two equals five, and sure enough, we get five right there, okay? So similarly, right? If we come over here, it's the exact same measure, right? So it's the same formula, but it's evaluating under a different filter context. For this cell, there's going to be a filter context of type equals to go, because it says to go right there. And for this cell, there's going to be a filter of type equals dine in. It says dine in right there, right? So it's the same code. The measure has the same code, but it evaluates under a different filter context. So for this cell, we get this temp table, right? We add an expression column, with the definition of for every row, get that row's units, and then we're gonna sum up the results. So we get two, one, three, and two. And if we add all those up, what do we get? We get eight, right? And for this cell right here, again, we get all the visible rows of mini, this time with a filter for type equals dine in, so we just get the dine in rows, right? We have the same column to it, where for every single row, we get that row's units, and we sum it up because we're using the sum x function, right? So for that cell, we get one, for that cell, we get one, and for that cell, we get two. One plus one plus two equals four, and sure enough, we get four right there, okay? Uh, so quickly, before we move on, right? Well, actually, no, we'll go ahead and just move on to the next one. It's gonna sort of display this idea. So in the next one, it's gonna be very, very similar, except we're gonna get the average units. So this time, I just typed in units. I maybe could have typed in total units or sum of units, but in the next one, we want average units. So here in the measures column, go ahead and click on the average units measure, right? And right now the measure definition is blank, which is why we get a bunch of blanks right there. Go ahead and click on the end of line two and hit backspace a couple times, right? And so now uh, we're gonna use a simple builder pattern. A builder pattern is a table derivation inside of an iterator. The derivation is gonna be the physical table derivation where we get all the visible rows of mini. And the iterator is gonna be the average X function, which is gonna add this column to the temp table we get from that derivation and average the results. So let's go ahead and type in average, right? I'm gonna type in A-V-E-R, and then I've got these choices right here. I'm just gonna double click on average X. You can also type it all the way out. That works just fine. Make sure you have the opening parentheses. Shift enter, go to the next line. Okay, so what is the, the uh, temp table? How are we gonna get a temp table? We're gonna use a derivation. So go ahead and type in mini, M-I-N-I. -I. Uh, you can hit tab to have it auto-complete for you, or you can type it all the way out. Add a comma, right? Shift enter. Shift enter. What's the definition of our expression column? Well, for this one, uh, it's the same as before. For every single row, we want to get that row's units. So go ahead, type in mini. It should give you this list right here. You can either type this all the way out, or you can just double click on it. Shift enter. Backspace to line up the cursor with the A above and add closing parentheses. Okay. So go drive all the visible rows of mini. Add an expression column where for every row we get the units. And this time, take the average, right? So go ahead, hit enter. Right, and we get 1.75, 1.67, 2, and 1.33. Now we added the same expression column as we did before. The only difference is this time we average the results rather than summing them up. So if we just go to, oh, I don't know, what's a good example? Uh, this one down here, this one's nice and easy, right? For this cell right here, right, where the filter context is shift equals dinner, right? So when we derive all the visible rows of mini, we get just the dinner rows. And uh, the definition of our expression column is for every row, just get the units, because that's what it says right there. So we get two, one, and two. But unlike before, where we summed up the expression column because we were using sum x, now we're gonna average it because uh, we're using average x. So what's the average of two, two, and one? Well, if you get out a calculator, you can figure it out but it ends up being 1.67. Actually, it's 1.6666666, but it's gonna round it to 1.67, okay? And you can do that same math for these other cells over here. Now, if I were to change this, if I were to change this from average X to max X, what do you think you would get? What do you think you would get for uh, this cell right here? Well, it would produce this temp table, 
The expression column is still the same, so we get 2, 1, and 2. What's the max of 2, 1, and 2? You guessed it, it would be 2. So if you go ahead and hit enter, we get 2. And you can see that same logic for the other cells as well. Okay, so uh, the name of this measure is average unit. So let's change this back from max x to average x. In fact, actually, you know, before we do that, just to prove it to you, let's change it to min x real quick, just so we can see that. If it's min x, what do you think it's going to be? We get 2, 1, and 2. The minimum of 2, 1, and 2 should be 1. And sure enough, we'll get 1 right there. And you can do that same logic for the other uh, cells. Okay, so we're going to change it back to average x because the measure is called average units. So let's change this back to average x. I'm going to double click on that. Hopefully it types it out correctly. It sure does. And go ahead and hit enter. Okay. So now uh, we're going to calculate sales, total sales. Uh, I just typed sales to save us some space. So go ahead and click on the sales measure over here. Sales measure over here. Another simple builder pattern where we uh, have a derivation inside of an iterator. We're going to get all the visible rows of many, and for every single row, we're going to multiply that row's units times the price per unit, and then sum up the results. So click on the end of line two, and go ahead and hit backspace a couple times to get rid of that blank. Type in sum, and you could either uh, finish typing out sum x, or you could double click on it, either way. Or you could arrow down and hit tab. They all do the same thing. Make sure you've got the opening parentheses. Go ahead and hold down shift and hit enter to go to the next line, right? And so we need a temp table. Well, we're gonna use a derivation. So go ahead and type in mini, right? Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and double click on mini to have it, make sure it's spelled correctly and get the casing correct. Or you could just type it out, doesn't matter. Be sure to add a comma when you're done. Go ahead, do shift enter to go to the next line. So this is the temp table. To get a temp table, we're gonna use this derivation, all the visible rows of mini, What's the expression column that we're going to add to that temp table? For every single row, go get that row's units and multiply it by M-I-N-I, -I, that row's price per unit. Double click on that. Right. You could also arrow down and hit tab, or you could type it all the way out, right? But uh, your code should look like that. Mini and open square bracket units, close square brackets. Multiplication, mini, open square brackets, price per, closing square brackets. Okay, go ahead, do shift enter to go to the next line. Hit backspace to line up the cursor with the S in sum X and add a closing parentheses. And go ahead and hit enter. Okay, we get $57, $43, $68, and $32. Okay, so I could go through all four of these. But let's just go through this last one, this bottom left one, because that one's pretty easy. So this is going to be for uh, this cell right here, which has a filter for shift equals dinner which looks like that. That is the filter context within which this code evaluates, okay? So if I get all the visible rows of many, given a filter context of shift equals dinner, well, I'm just gonna get the dinner rows, right? Which produces that temp table right there, right? And we're gonna add an expression column with the definition for every row, get the units and multiply it by the price per unit. And then we're gonna sum up the results. So two times nine is 18, right? One times 11 is 11. And two times seven is 14. Now, I actually can't do that math in my head. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my calculator. So I'm going to hit Windows key and type in C-A-L. Uh, you can finish typing C-A-L-C just to make sure you get calculator. Hey, there's my calculator. I'm going to click on it. All right? You don't have to do this part. I'm going to. Let's just make sure that this is correct. So uh, what is two times nine? Well, that's 18. 18 uh, plus what is one times 11? Well, that's 11 plus... What is two times seven? That's 14, so we're gonna plus 14, and we're gonna do equals, and it's 43. And sure enough, we get 43 bucks right there. And you can do that same math for uh, this cell, this cell, and this cell. And the only difference is gonna be what temp table you get given the filter context of each one of these cells. Okay, one more. We're gonna go ahead and do the cost. I think you see where this is going. So go ahead and click up here on the C in cost to select the cost measure. Right? right now it's set to blank, that's not what we want. So go click on the end of line two, hit backspace a couple times, right? And we're gonna do yet another builder pattern, very similar builder pattern with a derivation inside an iterator. We're gonna do uh, sum x, so type in sum, and either double click on sum x, or you can even arrow down and hit tab, right? Make sure you've got an opening parentheses, you probably do if you hit tab or double clicked on it. If you typed it out, you may not, so make sure you've got an opening parentheses. Shift enter. Okay, so some X wants a temp table, and we're going to give it a temp table using a derivation. So go ahead and type in mini, right? And there it says mini, so I'm going to double click on it, add a comma, 
shift enter. Okay, so argument one is the temp table. Argument two, here on line four, is what's the definition of our expression column? Well, uh, since we want total cost, we're going to take the cost per unit and multiply it by the number of units. And if you want to do units first and then multiply it by cost per, that's fine. I'll do it like it is down here. So for every single row, type in M-I-N-I. -I. We want the cost per unit, which is the very first one. So go ahead and double click on that or hit tab. Add a space, multiplication. Now type in uh, mini and do units. Hey, Brian, is it important to have the spaces? Uh, no, you can have the spaces if you want to. I think it makes it more readable, but you don't technically have to. Okay, so we're going to derive this temp table, all the visible rows of mini, add this column to it, and sum up the results. Shift enter, backspace, close in parentheses, and hit enter. Okay, 37, 35, 50, and 22. Okay, let's just do, oh, let's just do this one because we're pretty familiar with it. So this is going to be uh, this bottom cell right here. This is dinner of co the cost measure evaluated in this row. So since we're in this row, there's going to be a filter context of shift equals dinner, right? When we go get all the visible rows, it's going to be assuming the filter context of shift equals dinner. So we just get the dinner rows in this temp table, right? We're going to add an expression column where for every single row, we take the cost per and multiply it by the number of units. So the cost per unit multiplied by the units. So two times eight is 16. 1 times 9 is 9, and 2 times 5 is 10. And again, I don't want to do the math in my head, so I'm going to go pull out my calculator. I'm going to do Alt-Tab and go get my calculator, right? So uh, 2 times 8 is 16. Let's go ahead and I'm going to clear this. So we get 16 plus 1 times 9 is 9, plus 2 times 5 is 10. Go ahead, hit Equals, and we get 35, and sure enough, we get 35 right there. And you can do that same logic for all the other cells as well, okay? All right, so that is it for our first video on this. Uh, this is where we use the uh, physical table derivation, which is what we'll use most often when we're doing aggregations. In the next video, we'll walk through some of the other derivations and how to use them in the builder pattern. Awesome, okay, I will see you next video.